book of Mark, in the sixth chapter, beginning to read at the 31st verse. We'll read just a few verses here. Mark 6 and 31. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while. For there are many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed unto a desert place by ship privately, and the people saw them departing. And many knew him, and ran afoot hither out of all the cities. And out went them, and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion towards them. Because they were as sheep not having a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Send them away, that they may go into a country around about, and into the villages, and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. And he answered, and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they, saw, they say unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread, and give them to eat? And he saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew that they, they say, Five and two fishes, and he commanded them to make all to sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set them before them. The two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments of the fishes and they did eat the loaves were about 5,000 men. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side unto Bethesda. And while he sent away the people, and when he had spent, sent them away, he departed in a mountain to pray. And when evening was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone in the land. And he saw them towing and rowing, for the wind was contrary to them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them walking upon the sea, and would have passed them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed that he had been a spirit, and cried out, for they all saw him, and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them, and said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And he went out unto them unto the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were so amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. Amen. There are 18 miracles of Jesus recorded in only one of the four Gospels. There are 18 miracles that are only recorded in one of the four Gospels. There are six miracles of Jesus recorded in only two of the four Gospels. There are 12 miracles of Jesus recorded in only three of the Gospels. But there is only one miracle that is recorded in all four of the Gospels. And that is the feeding of the 5,000. There is only this one miracle that is recorded in all four Gospels. And I think there is something that you and I today can learn 
from each, there is something that is in each one of the four that is not in any other. In other words, when you look at all four of those accounts of the feeding of the 5,000, there is one thing in each one of them that is not in the other three. And I think there's something here tonight that you and I can take home with us. A few things here. And here's what, there is some, something unique about each one. And for Mark, the unique thing about Mark account of this miracle of Jesus, this feeding of the 5,000, is the very first few verses. And that, that it is this, that Jesus was tired and wore out. It doesn't tell us in any other place. It doesn't tell that, us that in, in John or Luke or, or Matthew. It doesn't tell us in any, only in Mark does it tell us that Jesus is wore out and he's so exhausted from doing this work and that work that he's going out to a desert place. They had not need time to take any leisure, not even to eat. Not even to, ta not even to eat had they taken the time. And he is wore out. No doubt in himself. No doubt physically and no doubt spiritually wore out. I mean, you know, his spirit within him being down. But he looks out there and he sees uh, these that are like sheep without a shepherd. And he has compassion on them and goes out and begins to teach them. Now, the next thing that I really see about that Amen. Is that, that I learned from that that I didn't get from any of the others because it wasn't there. Amen. Is Jesus is trying to tell us it's just as important. It's more important about others' needs than it is ours. And I think that's what he's done. But not only just the spiritual, but also the physical. Because if you look down to verses 41, when he took the bread... Amen. Glory to God. Instead of eating some of it, he break it and give it to the disciples to give out to them. He give to them to eat first, even though he hadn't had time either to take a bite to eat. So the first thing that I see here that Mark teaches that any of the rest of them, in my mind does, amen, is you and I are to prefer a brother. That our needs really take second fiddle. Amen. If we're going to be like Christ. And how many of you know that's a hard thing? Amen. It really is, isn't it? Amen. It's a hard thing. The second unique thing we find in the book of John's account, amen, in the sixth chapter and the sixth verse that we don't see in Mark, we don't see in Luke, we don't see in Matthew, but we find it only in John. In St. John 6 and 6, amen, that would be in Matthew's, Mark's gospel here, about the 37th verse. In other words, this is about the same time that that happened. Amen. I'm going to read 36 and 37 in Mark, and then I'm going over to St. John and read the 6 and 6. Send them away that they may go into the country around about, this being his disciples speaking, and into the village and buy themselves bread. For they hath nothing to eat. But look what Jesus, he answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, Shall we go and buy two penny worth? Okay. Of bread. Now, St. John 6 and 6 adds something here to that. It's, it's, not, it's not trying to, it just gives a little more understanding. St. John 6 and 6 says, And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. He himself knew what he would do. Now that word prove means to test, to assay, to examine, to prove, or to try. You know, Jesus wanted to find out if Philip knew who he really was. That he was the Messiah, the Christ. Amen. And I really know that because of something we're going to find out in an account in another one of the Gospels. 
the very first time that Jesus explained to him who he was, that he was going to die and raise again the third day. When we get to that towards the end. He wanted to prove. He didn't know whether Philip knew who he was. He didn't know. He wanted to say whether Philip believed in who he was. I think he wanted to prove to me, uh, to me and to you that there was... that. <laughs> I wrote that down that don't make sense. Amen. I think he wanted to prove to me and to you that there wasn't enough for even all of them to have one bite. Do you get that? Because, you see, there was only the two fishes, there's only loaves. He said two pennies worth won't even buy enough for everybody to get a bite. I think he wanted Philip to say that. Now we see that there's two things that all four of the Gospels have in common. We're going to get back to the unique here, but there's two things that all four of them state exactly the same. And that is this. Amen. That the difference, and I take this out of this. I, I've taken this out of the past of it. You know, they, they come up there and they show that there was not enough. Two fishes and five loaves wouldn't feed the people that's here tonight, not lonely 5,000 men. Is that right? It wouldn't do it. I mean, especially me and Keith Eaton. Is that right? It wouldn't do it. There's no way. And I, I'm here to tell you today, in fact, in one account, it gives a, an adjective, I mean, a description there, and it says small fishes, amen. So I know it wouldn't do it. And glory to God. So there's no way. And I've often taken away this, the difference between what you have and what you need is Christ's blessing. And I believe that, don't you? Amen. I believe Jesus showed that right here. Amen. They come to him and that's all they had. Amen. They didn't have enough money to go and buy enough to take care of it. They didn't have enough to take care of it. Amen. Praise God. The only thing they could do was give it to him. Ain't that right? Amen. And that is the difference for you and I today. Another little fault I took out here that I see in in bowl all four of the Gospels is no matter how little you give God, He takes it, He multiplies it, He does something good with it. And you know what? Usually there's more comes back to you than you give in the first place. Amen. I don't believe you now give God, do you? And I see that right there in that Scripture, don't you? I see it. Amen. And I believe that's true for us all. The next thing that we see that is unique uh, comes from the, on, uh, from the only account in Matthew. Only in Matthew. Now look, look what it says in Matthew's Gospel, the 14th chapter and the 21st verse. The very last part right here, the very last part of uh, talking about this miracle. And look what it says. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides the women and children. Now you say, Brother Jimmy, what's that tell you? That tells me that this miracle was three to four times bigger than, amen. If you just read the other ones, it just talks about the 5,000 men. But here it tells you that it was besides the women and the children. Now that tells me that there was probably closer to at least 15,000 people there. Now I'm telling you, that's a lot of people to feed with two fishes and five loaves of barley bread. Isn't it? It really is. That's a whole lot. A whole lot. The next one is in the account of Luke. Look with me, if you would to the ninth chapter of Luke and the 18th to the 22nd verse. Ninth chapter, the 18th through the 22nd verse. Now we stopped. Now, amen. In Mark's gospel, 
That's where we read in the first place. In the 44th verse, really is the last verse telling about the miracle. It accounts it on just a little farther, which is going to be important in a minute. But the 41st, 44th verse says this, And they did eat all of the loaves and were about 5,000 men. So between the 44th verse, right there was really the end of the miracle. And now we're not to Luke yet, all right? And the 45th verse of Mark says, And straightway he constrained his disciples to go into the ship. Now I'm going to tell you, according to the book of Luke, there was something else a little bit that happened right there. Okay? Right here, in the book of Luke 9 and 18 through 22, look what it says. This is right after it says almost exactly the same thing, that they fed the 5,000. And it came to pass, as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? And they answering said, John the Baptist, but, but, but some say, Elias, and others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answering said, The Christ of God. In other words, the Messiah. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, and he reject and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And my, my, the best I can find, this is the first time that Jesus tells them anywhere that he's going to die. That he tells them he's going to raise again. That they recognize that he is the Messiah. And it's right after, in my mind, the biggest miracle, uh, amen, that he has done. It's right there. Can you imagine their faith? Can you imagine the faith of the disciples when he hands, when they hand him two fishes and five loaves of bread, Brother Tony, and he lifts it up towards heaven and he blesses it and he takes it down here and breaks it up and puts it on a platter and he gives it to them and glory to God, they go out there and hand it out among approximately about 15,000 people and when they bring it back, amen, it fills 12 baskets, glory to God, bigger than what they brought out. Now, I mean, their faith was bound to be boosted, right? And glory to God, when he asked them, Brother Raymond, he said, he said, whom, whom do man say that I am? And then whom do you say? Thou art the Christ of God. Thou art the Messiah, in other words, of God. The promised one. And I, I'm going to go to the grave, he says. And then I'm going to rise again three days later. Is that right? Now to me, to me, I take that, I don't take that as, as there's uh, controversy between these two chapters. I believe Mark just didn't account that right there, amen. And glory to God, then they went straight on up under the ship. I don't really know. But I can tell you this, let's go back to Mark now. Now that we see here that these disciples really know who Jesus is, they just remember they just got their faith boosted up tremendous. Wouldn't that boost your faith? I mean, glory to God, the past two Sundays has boosted my faith. I've seen two people saved now. I ain't seen that in a long time, amen? And it boosted me, amen? Praise the Lord, I wish I had another little boost tonight, you know, but I don't, <laughs> but that's just the way it is, amen? That's the way it is. But look here what it says. Let's go back to the book of Mark and the 45th chapter, I mean 45th verse, Mark 6 and 45, and straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go over to the other side. Now, now remember, after he went and prayed for them, he looked out and he saw them rowing, but they wasn't getting nowhere. I've been there before. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. He wasn't getting nowhere because it took him a while to send them off and go up on the mountain. We know that. And then he could still see them. And I'm telling you, at the ocean, you don't get out that far before you can't, you know, before they tip over the curve of the edge there, right? But glory to God, here he came walking to them by sea in the 48th verse. 
and would have passed them by. Now, I think that's important. I think that's important for a reason. That it's written right here, right after all these events, that Jesus would have passed them by. Remember back there before, he was trying to prove Philip. You remember that? Lord God, and I, and I told you, I thought he was trying to prove Philip because he, he wanted to see if he really knew who he was. Amen. Praise God. If he, he recognized, uh, amen, exactly what Jesus could do. And of course he didn't. But now he should have because Jesus just told him. Ain't that right? Their faith had just got boosted above and they knew that he was the Messiah, the Christ of God. They knew, amen, because he just got through telling them, amen, glory to God, that he was going to uh, die and then raise again the third day. Is that right? Amen. But yet, what happened when they went up there, glory to God, he, they saw him, and he holler, he, they hollered at him, and he came up on the boat, and he said, it's I, don't be afraid. And you know, he, he calmed the seas and all them things. And then notice it said they wondered and was in amazement. Is that right? That glory to God, he had done this miracle. And he said, because they considered not the loaves. They shouldn't have been no wonder and amazement that he could have made the water's peace be still, should there? He just got through feeding 5,000 people, 15,000 people with two fishes and five loaves of bread. Now, something I take away here today. Whenever we get a boost of faith, sometimes there's a try of faith. I see that. I do. I see that sometimes. Amen. I really do. But the last thing that I really kind of take out of that, and let me go up here and make sure I get it right. Notice, notice, amen, that it said their hearts were hardened. Now here, boy, I really like this verse, Brother Raymond. Their hearts were hardened. The last verse I read there. They considered not the miracles of the loaves, and their hearts were hardened. You see, hardened means it's 44, 56 in your strongs, on the Hebrew word. Okay? And it means a kind of stone to, to render stupid or callous. That's exactly what it says if you look in your strongs. To render stupid. It is amazing to me that how Sometimes I find myself like the disciples. Amen. That I'm rendered stupid. Amen. Or got some callous right here. Because a little storm arises. Somebody say amen. And I cry out in fear. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. When God sent me to whatever I was doing in the first place, the Lord knowed I was going to be all right. Amen. amen. And when I know all the miracles that God has done before us, I consider not all the times that He's brought me through this and that and the other and took me through this and that and the other. So let us not be too hard on the disciples. Could I get an amen? Maybe they won't be too hard on us, all right? But today, I thought this quite interesting. There's so many thoughts here that we can take home out of this one, one miracle, really. Really, there's two here, but this one is what we're really talking about. That Christ gives a display on. And I believe that's the reason it's in all four Gospels, because there's unique parts to each one of them about that. Amen. 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 I believe it's important that you and I learn this lesson from Christ. Amen. And learn how to try to prefer our brother.
because our most selfish times in this life is when we're tired and wore out and hungry. Could I hear amen? amen. amen. And for fat people, it's real bad when they're hungry. You know, i got no problem giving chicken leg away after I've eat. Somebody say amen. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. We all got too much problem after we've eaten good. Is that right? That's right. You and I today, amen, it is hard to learn that lesson. It is easy. It is easy today. Glory to God. And I'm trying to look back at each one of these, and it's hard to find all these spots. But, but it's easy to forget that Jesus is the difference between what we have and what we need. It, it is easy to forget that no matter how little, how little we give God, God takes it, multiplies it, uses it for the upbuilding of His kingdom, and there's usually more left over than what we give in the first place. Amen. It is easy to let our heart get hardened by and not consider all the things that God has done for us and all the things that He has brought us through to let something discourage us. Could I get an amen there? I mean, my goodness, I hate to say it, but we're, we as Christians are way too much of this. Am I right? You know I am. I... I work to get more like this. Somebody say amen. But, but sometimes those storms move us a little bit, doesn't it? They do. And we need to consider all that God has done with when things begin to happen to us that we don't like, don't we? We need to consider that so that we don't get rendered stupid <laughs> and stand in amazement at what God can do. Amen. So yes... That's all I really have tonight. That kind of went quick. I, I worked from 8.30 this morning to 2 o'clock this afternoon. Took me a little bit of a lunch break, but, but I can't really, you know, you can't really control all those things. But, but I hope, you know, I, I hope that you've enjoyed this. I, I, I really enjoyed studying today. I did. I enjoyed it. It took a long time, but I enjoyed it because it pointed out something that I had never really noticed before. Never really noticed. But listen, we need to pray. We need to pray for Brother John uh, Eb e e b b e r t s Eberts, right? Eberts. Man got saved two weeks ago, and his son Izzy that got saved last week. We need to remember them. They had another loss in the family. Uh, grandmother there, so please remember them. Let's, let's remember to pray for food distribution on Thursday night. Pray that somebody gets saved. We've started our services back. We'd love to see that, wouldn't we? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and you know, let's pray for one another. Let's pray for one another because what you're going through this week, Brother Raymond, might be what I go through next week. Amen. I might get rendered stupid next week. <laughs> Somebody say amen. How many of y'all admit right there to me that you've been rendered stupid before? Amen. We should just be honest. Ain't none of us perfect. Ain't that right? We've not considered all that God's done for us. Ain't that right? So, you know, I, sometimes I look up, and I shouldn't be, but I, I kind of I get discouraged because I see the numbers of them. But, but I can't really control that. Amen. All I'm going to do is keep going on with my Jesus just the same. That's all I know to do. That's all I know to looking for that blessed hope. Amen. Isn't it you? That's what I hope. Of course, I've been encouraged on Sunday. Numbers been up. So that's good. 